Good afternoon, everyone. The influence of galactic cosmic rays inducing more cloud cover on the planet is well known with the relationship. Taking a look through the last 2,000 years across Asia, those high points are grand solar minimums with more cloud cover. We see the same thing across South America. Over the last year and a half, galactic cosmic rays increased 12.5%, and this next solar cycle, 25, is expected to increase 19% more on top of that. And the inverse relationship is very apparent on the amount of galactic cosmic rays penetrating our atmosphere with the strength of the solar cycle. So we should look for signs. If it's increasing the amount of cloud cover on our planet, we should see lots more rain, record rains, rains in mysterious and unusual places. Kalahari Desert goes from brown to green. Miraculous, it's called. Record snowstorms across the Sahara, blanketing the dunes. Record floods in Saudi Arabia. Look how deep that's meters deep. Record-breaking snowfall across California, transforming what was desert into a super bloom of flowers. Even Death Valley blooming, and the wild flowers are something to behold. Record rains in Ularu around Alice Springs, the desert of Australia. The outback turning into lush, green desert landscapes. That was all brown, now it's green. So much water, prehistoric shrimp re-emerging from the ground, the shield shrimp. Also turtles that lie dormant in dry soils emerging. The driest place on our planet, the Atacama Desert, floral wonderland. These intertropical convergence zones shift during grand solar minimums. They push further south. Another indication in Southeast Asia, record floods across Thailand during the dry season, driest part of the year, record floods. And then we see last year the same thing in China, record floods. These are the indicators you need to look for as the grand solar minimum intensifies. And as you're watching the channel, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030. Now there's a second report coming out showing the galactic cosmic ray influence on the intertropical convergence zone. Higher amounts of galactic cosmic rays cause the intertropical convergence zone to shift south, thereby altering our weather patterns on the Earth. And with modern instrumentation, we know that galactic cosmic rays increased since March 2015, 12.5%. And then the forecast is for solar cycle 25 to increase another 19%, which means an enormous amount of clouds atmospheric compression events, out-of-season rains, and record rains across the planet. All you have to do is start to look for the signs. Is this occurring, yes or no? It's a very simple question. Let's start down in Africa. Kalahari, transforming the desert into a green, lush, pasture-like landscape. Now, since January, they received 400 millimeters of rain, but the average is 191, so they're more than double, well above the average. Looking at Saudi Arabia, they call it apocalyptic storms sweeping through the desert, massive, massive floods. They received a year's worth of rain in one storm. Two and a half meters of water flooding cities, plus they had an icy blast with hail on top of that. Jumping over to the Sahara, Snow swept landscapes. It was an all time record snowfall in the Sahara, but the previous snowfall was once 37 years ago. This is what it looks like covering the dunes, not normally seen. These images, when you look at them, it's very difficult to comprehend. That's a sand dune that's usually baking at 100 Fahrenheit plus. The very clear inverse relationship of cosmic rays and intensity of the solar cycle. The higher the solar activity, the less tropical cloud cover there is. Now we're going into the opposite. There's going to be an enormous amount of tropical cloud cover, so you're going to watch the temperature of this planet start to drop off. 2017 will not be the warmest year ever, and the IPCC is going to have a difficult time explaining this. They're even starting to trickle the words mini ice age in, but they always follow it by, well, the CO2 will outwarm the mini ice age. So if we're looking for more rainfall concentrations, can we find another example? This is California 2016 desert. A year later, lush flower blooms, the super bloom. 
Record-breaking water year across the Sierra Nevadas, all the way literally from British Columbia down to Southern California. This is a great site, Desert USA. Wonderful job they're doing compiling all the super bloom images here of the Southern California wildflower reports, plus other states, Arizona, New Mexico. This is what the desert has transformed into, this tapestry of multi-flora, multi-colors, never seen before in our lifetimes. Then we just have record after record after record of rainfall being broken all across the western United States going back into the 1800s. This is Death Valley blooming, the driest, hottest part of the United States. I did get lost in the images here. They're so beautiful. I really encourage you to jump over to Desert USA to take a look. There's hundreds and hundreds of these photos inside there. And even looking at further away vistas, you can still see the color saturation on the mountaintops. Incredible snow over the Sierra Nevadas, so much so that they're going to be able to keep the ski resorts open through the summer until the next snowfalls next year. That is the beginning of glaciation. When you get snowpack that holds over an entire year and then it starts falling again, what's going to happen next year when there's more snowfall again on top of this? It's very apparent that the shift further south during the grand solar minimums is going to push rainfall patterns in different places. Let's take a look at South America precipitation for the last 2,000 years. Wherever you see a spike on this chart, that is a grand solar minimum. You can easily match that with records going back the last 1,200, 1,800 years of solar activity. The driest place on our planet, the Atacama Desert. A year and a half ago, it turns into a floral wonderland. 600 miles long was this bloom, seen from space no less. Stunning images here. Not only were the flowers in bloom, when you look at the mountains there, they're covered in green as well. I started with this showing the pattern from a year and a half ago, progressing until now. It really started to happen in 2015. Then we come to this year, heavy floods in the driest part of Australia, Alice Springs, Central Australia Desert. Record floods across Ularu. They received a month and a half of rain in literally eight hours. After the storms passed, of course, the desert it is going to turn from this brown, windswept landscape that's the usual what you think of the outback straight into something like this, green and lush. Heavy rains turn Australia remote desert into green landscapes. Why not here for you? And the news in Australia kept going again and again on these stunning changes. How much grass is growing. How good it is for the cattle industry down there. The constant rainfall, huge grasses, a lot of vegetation. All of the river basins filling up. Creeks are filling. Deserts are blooming. And the emergence of shield shrimp that stay in the hardened earth until the next rainfall and come out spawn and then they go back underground and everything dries out in a concrete hard clay and then they reemerge on the next heavy rainfall they can stay down there for a decade or more this is also near alice springs close up here of the shield shrimp for you and at the same time the rains reawaken a western desert turtle that has the same life cycle profile it emerges only after the rains but stays underground puts a coating around its body so it doesn't completely dehydrate and it'll stay under the hot baked clay for a decade or more until it re-emerges more rains continued alice springs turns into swampland and everglades type landscape let's jump over to asia here Again, anywhere you see one of the spikes is where a grand solar minimum occurred. Those match 100% with what you saw across the South American reconstruction. Now, these two images laid side by side. The left image shows you when the intertropical convergence zone is more northerly, during our higher solar cycle, solar output. The right image is when it shifts further south. Thailand, a prime example, should be dry season and in January, February, high tourist season, best time to go. But now, record rainfall, record floods during the dry season. NASA analyzed this with their satellites and look how much precipitation came down 
massive flooding in the dry season. And if you do a side-by-side -side comparison with just a year apart from January 2016 to January 2017, you can see the enormous amount of increase in precipitation. So I just overlaid these graphs. Now, do you see a similarity with where the rainfall is starting with what the grand solar minimum south push on the intertropical convergence zone is doing? These are starting to match up pretty well. Give it a few more years, and I bet it would be somewhere in the 98% accuracy range. This image here again, this is the intertropical convergence zone more northerly. And as it does this movement from north to south over the 400-year cycle, China also experiencing climate changes. Pushing further south, massive floods across China. Just nine months ago, in the middle of the summer 2016, you can see the trend continuing. Unbelievable all-time floods turning central China literally into an inland sea. Wiping out crops, cities inundated, so much rain, they had to go back into the historical records and look back into literally the Ming Dynasty and the Yuan Dynasty four or 800 years ago to find rainfalls in the same areas, but there weren't cities then, but they talk about the Yangtze River Delta with these massive floods at the same time. There is a direct correlation and movement further south, wetter conditions in the Little Ice Age, Nice analysis here with the grand solar minimum showing you at the bottom when the blue lines push further south. That's the movement of the ICTZ south. I linked everything below in their description box so you can continue to do some of your own research. But there is a 100% correlation of grand solar minimum to increases in rainfall across this planet. And we're starting to see it again. And the IPCC is going to speak until they're blue in the face, saying that there's no connection between these two events of cosmic rays and the increased floods, blooming of deserts, and areas that don't get rainfall normally, along with record precipitation. This is going to increase exponentially as we get into this 19% increase in galactic cosmic rays over the next solar cycle. You have seen nothing yet. These atmospheric compression events are going to be the daily state of affairs on our planet. Where it's getting wetter, it's going to continue to get wetter. Where it's drying out, it should dry out. The African deserts are going to start blooming again. They could become food production areas for this planet. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And as we progress with these climate changes, our food growing areas across the planet are also going to start shifting. You're going to have to be more self-reliant, more self-sufficient. You're going to have to start growing some of your own food to supplement what's going to be lost in the very near future as prices rise as well. And one of those things is going to be gargantuan food price rises. You're going to have to start growing some of your own food. Heirloom vegetable seed kits is where you're going to need to start. You can protect this with a greenhouse. You can do indoor vertical farming with LED lights. Whatever you like to do, it is just up to your imagination how far you want to take it in sustainability. This full range of seeds allows you to grow several acres, and if you let at least 10% of that go to seed, you can collect that and replant for next year. GMO, you cannot do that.